Hello, everyone, and welcome to Alec TV. We are broadcasting here from Orlando, Florida at the Alec 50th Annual Meeting. And I'm really excited today to be joined by Tom Llewellyn, who I have spoken with before. He is with David Bidoff, and they're with the Federal Fiscal Sustainability Foundation. In plain English, what do you do? What's your organization all about, Tom? Our goal is to give the opportunity to put the brake on inflation, give people the right to vote for an amendment that will put the controls back in the scope of the federal government so that we can minimize uh, the inflation and maximize the opportunity for all Americans. So we're we're talking here about federal spending, but we're meeting here with state lawmakers. So tell me, what can states do to put the brakes on inflation? Uh, good question. Our founders thoughtfully put into the Constitution two ways to propose amendments to the Constitution. One of them would be uh, the way that's been used uh, every time before, which is uh, uh, two thirds of both houses of Congress can propose an amendment to the Constitution. And that's been done 33 times. But they also said that the states had to have equal authority to propose amendments with, uh, a, a, quote, the proper kind when Congress goes off the rails. And so what we have discovered is that the threshold of two thirds was reached in 1979. Congress hasn't counted these applications. And so we are going to file a mandamus case against uh, the Congress of the United States for failure to, to call a convention in 1979 that would have allowed the states to draft uh, proposed amendments uh, that would go to the people for ratification. And if, if uh, the people voted in three quarters of the states, mm -hmm. they could vote for something like the Swiss debt break. And uh, Tom can explain how the Swiss debt break and the ambassador explained to us today at ALEC uh, how effective that was, not only in taming inflation, but also in propelling prosperity of their people for the last 20 years. Basically, they've been able to moderate this, the growth of government to, to an economy that they can afford. And in so doing, instead of being on the exact same destructive path that Greece was on, they now have been able to ascend to one of the top economic forces and provide a, the highest level of, uh, of income for their people, the lowest unemployment, the, the lowest inflation, and the ability to have a, a rewarding life. They, uh, on the in, on the Haynes Misery Index, they are the happiest people, and we've been slowly sliding down on that scale here in America. So, Tom, I heard you say something there at the beginning of, of what Switzerland has done. And in my mind, what I heard was they're living within their means or they're not overspending. They're spending less than they take in. What was it that you said that they're doing that was sort of the fine, fancy fiscal term? Well, basically, they're just... Uh, providing for a government that they can afford. Thank you. Exactly. And how difficult is that of a concept to understand? Well, Why can't we do that in this country? Universally, the voters want that. The right. 85% of voters, no matter which party affiliation they have, right. uh, know that we need to get the under control, the spending, and it's unsustainable. Even Congress knows that. The tragedy is that they cannot stop themselves why, from this why process. Why can't they? That's why the states have to intervene in and inter intervene in this process. So this is very similar to uh, something that was put in in the 90s in uh, Colorado. It's called, Tabor. Ta it's called Tabor. Yeah. There is a spending growth limit at every level of government in Tabor. This is Switzerland has a spending growth limit. There is a, a total amount of money they can spend next year. So they, when they go into budgeting, it's not like the sky's the limit. It's this is all you can spend, period. If you go over that, you have violated their constitution. And that is what, but so they slowed the growth of government spending from the 90s down from like five and a half percent a year down to two and a half percent a year. They didn't have to cut spending. They had to slow it growth, the, slow the growth down to the, the speed of, of the economy, basically. And that has made all the difference. And it is now the model Everybody says it. S and P says it. Uh, uh, it is. The, it's the model, not just for fiscal responsibility, but also for the prosperity of the people. They are now number one. Switzerland, 
went from the same as the United States to number one in the G20 in, in GDP per capita. Now all of Europe is trying to emulate the Swiss success story. Yeah, uh, Germany is in, is expanding their con fiscal controls, and Germany's recommending that everybody in the uh, EU uh, maintain that uh, that those same standards because they work. Well, I, all I can say is it's a little embarrassing for the United States to be following the lead of Europe. Like if Europe got their act together before we did in terms of fiscal restraint, that this is a huge shift, I would say. I would like to bring it back to yes. what Alec brings to this party. It is because of Alec that we were able to accumulate over the last 10 years, 16 state applications. And today uh, it is, it's because of the types of people that are attracted to federalism, mm -hmm. a limited government, uh, and and free you know and freedom is it's the we had a packed house talking about how the states and this is about how the states themselves acting alone without right. congress without right. the president without the supreme court acting alone they have the power to propose an amendment that can propel the prosperity and uh safety of the people for for hundreds of years not only that but you know the approval rating of Congress is down to what, 15% now? Mm -hmm. yeah, lucky. A lot of that mm -hmm. is because they're unresponsive. Uh, if 85% of the voters want fiscal uh, reform and they're, it's not even on their agenda, right. then, then how unresponsive is that? One of the things that the Swiss ambassador told us yesterday was that the number one factor in, in, in among the population there is that the people understand that the politicians have to listen to the people. Mm -hmm. that they are responsive and that's really the disconnect that we have here in america and a way the way we can achieve that is by having the states resurrect this check on the power of congress to be able to address issues that they've just simply ignored and unfortunately their main uh, responsibility under article 5 to administer the the accumulation of these applications has been totally uh, neglected they, they have uh, never uh, admitted that they don't have any process for dealing with them, storing them, re recording them, or dealing with it at all. They have no uh, discretion in terms of uh, determining uh, the applications, but the, uh, but the convention should have been called 40 years ago, long before our trillions of dollars of debt uh, became a, a, a national crisis. Well, I appreciate you both coming and sharing this message. Did you have a final thought? Here? I did. And I think it is that we have a partisan divide in this country that is tearing us apart. But this is about uh, a vote of the people and it will a party label will mean absolutely nothing. There will be no partisan divide whatsoever. If the people have a chance to vote for their own best interest, low inflation, high growth rates, prosperity, uh, and, and a government that is stable financially, so that is, um, there's no threat that someday we would end up like Greece. Uh, uh, and and, uh, and again, it is because of the vote of the people that uh, in Switzerland, they go back to this every time they talk about the Swiss debt break. It was because of the people voting 85% for that break that the politicians never even gave it a thought to break it. Yeah, We need to have this buy-in by the people the people understand that the gravy train's over and that we're just simply jeopardizing the future of our kids and grandkids right. yeah. and, the, and the potential of our country uh, and putting a burden uh, that uh, is unnecessary by, by continuing this. We're one of the few constitutions on the planet that provides for a way that, to the states and the people to override the ill actions of a central government. Do you have something you want to share? And, and, and now we have, we, have, we have an opportunity to give uh, a break, the U.S. a break and mm -hmm. stop inflation and stop this reckless, destructive behavior. The Congress knows they are uh, destroying the future of the country, but can't help themselves. It's time for the states and the people to stand up. And happy anniversary to Alec for 50 years of incredible uh, uh, policy making by people that want freedom, prosperity, and and federalism. And uh, and it's it's because of the people that you attract to these events. Uh, that we're able to sit here today and say we've got a shot 
at uh, being beating Switzerland, and but the Swiss ambassador said, "No, you're not going to beat us." And uh, so I said, "Game on, let's go." <laughs> We're here to uh, to bring common sense to the pocketbook of Congress. Tom Llewellyn and David Vidoff with the Federal Fiscal Sustainability Foundation. Thanks for joining us for this Alec TV live stream. Thank you.